everybody, welcome back. Or if you're new here, hello, my name is Karima and I am obsessed with skin. And that's kind of the focus of today's tutorial, expensive looking skin. This is not a phrase that I coined, I've heard it more in the editorial makeup industry, but essentially it's hyper real skin that's radiant and hydrated, but not in a way that looks makeup-y, more like you've had a really amazing facial. And to clarify, expensive looking skin need not include expensive products. It's more in the application techniques. Uh, so yeah, if you like what I do, don't forget to hit subscribe and let's begin. Surprise! Skin focused makeup look requires really great skin prep. Who would have thunk it? So I like to use some sort of chemical exfoliant to give the skin that naturally polished look, especially in the lead up to an event. I really love this one, it's Amazeballs by uh, Korean brand COSRX, really gentle, uh, really effective, also reasonably priced, love, love, love. The next step is relatively new in my routine and it's also Korean inspired, it's an essence. So this is typically a very watery fluid and I actually do feel as though essences help with dehydration. It kind of feels like a drink of water and then the moisturizer on top seals it in. I was very much a skeptic but I'm coming around to this idea of essences. Go ahead and use your moisturizer, one that suits your skin type. This one is my favorite, it's perfect for drier skin types, and I reviewed it in my 2016 Beauty Favorites, which I will link somewhere on a, in a card on the screen. So all in all, skin prep, so key. When I went to the uh, MAC trend report recently, and they discussed all the artistry techniques used behind the scenes at Fashion Week, Really taking the time to make the skin look beautiful is an iteration that we pretty much see every single season, season after season. Final skin prep is lips and I'm using the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. I feel like I have spoken about this product quite enough. Um, it's such a bomb lip treatment, give it a go, awesome stuff. Let's move on to the makeup. So opt for a primer that addresses your own skin concerns. So I like a bit of a, a pore filling smoothing primer on the nose to give the illusion of really smooth skin. But you might want a primer geared towards longevity or if you have an oilier skin type, you might want a mattifying primer. You know, alternatively, if you feel as though your skin prep is adequate, you can skip primer altogether. For foundation, I'm using my favorite mix of foundations, the Armani Luminous Silk and the Maestro Glow. You guys have seen this a trillion times. I love mixing my own concoctions though to create an entirely new formula. Why not, right? You know, instead of buying a new foundation, why not mix what you already own and you might discover something beautiful. So because I'm dry, my ideal foundation is on the dewier side. But if you are more oily, then you can go for a satin or demi matte finish. This look doesn't have to be super glossy. The main takeaway here is that we're working in really thin layers to ensure that the base really melts into the skin. And I find that the Beauty Blender is actually a really great um, choice of tool here for a very skin-like base. If you have any uh, blemishes or shadowy areas to cover, we're going to address that with concealer. I like to keep the foundation as thin as possible. Onto concealer, and I am 100% on the Tarte Shape Tape bandwagon. Holy moly, you guys. I want to use this over a larger portion of my face to do a bit of a highlighty sort of thing, but I find that if I use the, the big applicator to apply the product, I always apply way more than I actually need. So instead I like to dispense the product on the back of my hands and then use a brush to place the product, again, very thin layers. You'll notice that I start on the sides of the nose to eliminate those shadowy areas. And this is actually my favorite way to contour the nose because I don't need to use dark contour products and this way it looks realistic in all lights, you know, even in natural light, not just a studio setup. I extend the highlight through the under eye hollows, a um, bit on the tops of the cheekbones, and I pat this in with fingers because I don't really want to shift anything after I've been so careful to apply in really thin layers. Unfortunately, or, or fortunately, I don't have any blemishes to cover, uh, but what I'll do is I'll link my spot concealing routine in the description box. I use a scribble technique, and it is like Photoshop. Check it out. Next step is reoccurring, and you will likely be sick of it by the end of this tutorial. Fix Plus. So sandwiching uh, layers of product between some sort of face mist, um, you can even use water if you like, is the antidote to cakey makeup. And I find particularly good if you have areas of dehydration, uh, which is much of the population. Apparently we are all dehydrated, according to my facialist, and she seems to know skin. 
So to add a little bit of bronze and sculpt the face, I'm taking uh, the darker foundation actually that I used in my mix earlier. This is not a whole heap darker than my skin tone, but I kind of prefer it to a cream bronzer because A, foundations tend to be less orange, and also cream bronzers can sometimes shift the base underneath and you don't have to worry about that when you're using a foundation or a coverage product. Uh, we also want those edges to be really seamless, so really carefully blending so that you can't see where it starts or where it finishes. Cream blushes, I think, just epitomize healthy, beautiful skin. And I am head over heels with this one um, from Tony Molly. I wanna say that it was like $4 or something. And honestly, the formula is gorgeous. It's a bit velvety. It's almost like you mix a cream blush with a bit of a face primer. It's got that velvety feel. It blends effortlessly and I love it. You can use whatever shade you like. I find with my naturally uh, pink cheeks that pink blushes tend to make me look quite sunburnt. So I tend to go for the apricot and the peachy hues, but use whatever shade you feel uh, complements your own skin tone. And surprise, we're gonna use some face mist. More than anything, I use Fix Boss because the, the mist is ultra fine. For highlight, I'm going to be skipping that blinding look today and going for more of a, a natural sheen. This is the strobing stick, also by Tony Molly, and I think the strobing stick is such a fitting name because it offers this beautiful shine, but there's no shimmer. And I know that I said in my Korean haul that most Korean highlights miss the mark for me, um, or at least for my preferences, but let me just eat my words for just a sec because this one is heavenly. And again, super cheap, like a few bucks. Anyway, dabbing carefully on the high points of the face. If you have an oily skin type, you might want to keep the shine on the cheekbones because you will likely develop some natural dewiness uh, in the T-zone, you lucky bugger. Also, just really quickly, this is my best tip for concealer creasing. So it's been about 10 minutes since I've applied that concealer and I've actually allowed it some time to settle and crease. I'll then take a Q-tip and remove some product where I know and I can see that my makeup really wants to settle. So typically this is under the lash line. I also do this with laugh lines. So now when I go to powder, there's just less product there to migrate and crease. And that's always been my philosophy. If something wears awkwardly in a certain area, remove some and it will wear less awkwardly. <laughs> Onto powder, and I think powder is an absolute godsend. Um, you know, really underrated. It can make the skin look so much smoother and it enhances uh, makeup longevity. But I think there's this fine line where too much can encourage makeup to look cakey. So I apply as little as I can possibly get away with. Um, if you are on the oilier side, you might want to set much of your face, and that's totally cool. But I think that it's kind of easy to just kind of mindlessly dunk face in powder. And lately, I at least, have been trying to be more purposeful, I guess, with my application. From here, you can pair this look with a wing liner or a bright lip or whatever you want. But personally, I like to pair the expensive skin look with not much else. I want that focus, all the focus to be on the beautiful skin. For brows, we're going uh, with quite a PC textured brow with a lot of skin shining through. Oh, this brow just makes me so happy. So I switched up my brow routine recently and I could honestly talk about this all day long. So if you wanna see that, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll do an entire video on it. But for the moment, we're just gonna whiz through. For the eyes, it's ridiculously simple. We're just gonna take uh, some sort of soft, sandy gold across the lids. I'm using uh, this Tarte Face Palette, which I really enjoy, but you do not need this product, or actually any of the products that I'm using today for that matter. You probably have some sort of soft gold highlight at home, right? You're good. We're gonna take a lighter shimmer for the tear duct area and some sort of contoury shade to run softly through the socket and also a little bit on that outer lower lash line. It's like the easiest eyeshadow ever, just throw something, a little something on there. If you are skipping false lashes, then you can give your lashes a good curl, apply mascara, call it a day. If you want to amp up the glam a little and transform this into more of an evening look, uh, you can tight line the upper waterline with either a brown or a, a black eyeliner. I like to use black because I have a high contrast coloring. We're also pushing some of that product into the bed of the lashes uh, with a brush. This is kind of like a softer variation of a, a gel or liquid eyeliner and it helps to blend 
a lash band if you're using a strip lash. On that note, I chose a lash style that it kind of looks a little bit imperfect, you know, they're little clusters. Uh, if you can't get your hands on these, then a really good dupe would be Ardell Wispies or Demi Wispies, similar style. I did intend on using individuals, but then I decided that I'm actually way too lazy for that. Blend the natural and the false lashes together with the mascara. I also like to add a little bit of mascara to the lower lashes. Onto the lips, and if we go back to the MAC trend report, um, the Fashion Week trend report, we saw a lot of gloss. Uh, gloss on the eyes, on the skin, on the cheekbones, on the lips, and all of us were just so inspired by that session. So I actually started wearing clear gloss on my lips, and there is just something about a, a really just softly transparent lip that I think is really refreshing. I can be a little bit funny about certain gloss formulas on my lips, but I do enjoy this uh, one by Rimmel. The Oh My Gloss in Crystal Clear because this one's not too slippy and thin and I don't feel like it's kind of smudging around my face or catching in my hair. I have also used this one on the cheeks and the eyes and it works well for that as well if you're feeling a little editorial. That is the final face. I really like this look because I feel like you can wear it just about anywhere and it doesn't look overdone. It could pass as a very natural look um, despite there being a fair bit of makeup involved. Uh, just all smoke and mirrors. Come say hello to me on Instagram. As always, I would love to chat to you there. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Been trying to get all of you all night. We haven't talked in months, but that's all right. Was wondering if you wanted to go for a drive. I just need some fresh air.